Welcome back to Murray's Minis. Before I show you how I painted this brand new Argyle Toll Miniature from Ford World, quick trigger warning, this video will contain a lot of swearing. I mean a lot. This is the miniature that we're going to be painting today, the brand new Argyle Toll miniature from Ford World. Uh, this video did not go as smoothly as I would have hoped. In fact, it was a complete cluster f I ended up losing about two hours worth of footage because I had to completely reset my iPhone because of the iCloud storage and the trouble with the system storage that took up about 45 gigs worth of space. And yeah, it ended up being a complete and utter nightmare. The model itself ended up being a bit rushed and yeah, generally my color composition was just not on point for this one. So starting off as always, Molotail Black, give it just a nice solid coat. It's a good paint, nice finish. You can't go wrong with this paint, really nice. Then I decided to go in for purple. This was for all of the flesh tones and the colors. I really wanted to have a deep, vibrant uh, purple to all of the flesh colors, especially with the wings. And Lupercal Green for the as the base color for all of the reds, because I wanted to have a nice, deep green color, um, which is complementary to red, so that way we could have some nice accents. And then Peachy Flesh Ink sprayed all over the top of it, which was probably a bit of a misstep in hindsight, but I was in a bit of a rush to kind of do this and I just sat down, started painting before I really thought it out, which is a bad idea. So a nice deep red ink over all of the armor parts. Once again, in hindsight, I didn't need to apply this as hard into all of the areas that I did. I did it on the shoulder pads, which I probably should have just painted black and that would have made a significant amount of sense. So I'm using a lot of uh, Winsor & Newton colors, uh, Abtalung 205 for all of my oil colors. Uh, you can get that Winsor & Newton set for about 30 pounds off of Amazon. Uh, they're only like 12 mil tubes, but they'll give you tons of different colors. Unfortunately, I'd lost so much footage from where I'd painted the wings, which was probably my focal point for when I was painting this model. I wasn't as concerned about much of the other details like the bone details or the red as I was on the wings. And unfortunately, I completely lost that footage. So I'm gonna do a separate video at some point with another miniature to show you guys how I did that. But with the oil paints, it's pretty much the same process. You watch where you've already added all of that color and light information with your xenophil highlights and you just pick complementary colors to that so when it's sort of the deeper dark purples i picked a gorgeous deep purple that was very very diluted so that way it would blend and it wouldn't completely cover over the work that i'd done with the airbrush and then when it came to the fleshy peachy colors start off with sort of a mid-range very bright flesh color very, very peachy colored, and then go in with the highlights and smoothly blend it in using a very white flesh tone. And doing the exact same techniques with the blue and the red here, just starting off from like your mid-tones, identify where your shadows are, where your lights are, add where you want the lights to be with some diluted oil paint, and then just feather them, blend them in gently. With the wings, I could go for streaking motions, and because of the texture of the wings, it actually worked out really nicely. I wouldn't recommend doing that on armor because you'll end up with very streaky sort of lines. You're best off dabbing to create, uh, especially on power armor that has a lot of kind of smooth plates. You want that to be quite smooth and gentle. So I've done a lot of the uh, oil work at this point and I just decided that it needed a lot more definition that's the problem with oil paints is that you get some fantastic blending, but when you're done, it tends to be a bit of a mess of blends and color. So I went in with a heavily diluted uh, black oil paint and just did a pin wash in all of the areas. And that really helps to bring things together, brings that definition back. And you can see where your edge highlighting is really gonna be needed. 
and it also helps create that separation between the tones and the colors. Oil painting is a really wonderful technique, but it can make things look muddy because of how well it all blends together. And you can see that there are a lot of lines and cracks and crevices that just will not show out unless you do this stage. It's absolutely essential to it, but it's really, really worth it. So I'm just going in and pin washing the whole thing just so when we come to the edge highlights, we know where we're working to and it just gives that model the definition that it really, really deserves. I'd also kind of messed up the black on the wings. It just wasn't looking quite as defined and as nice as it should have been. To be honest, this model was very much a bit of a nightmare. It took me five days to get it done, it was far too long. Now these are the colors that I use for my edge highlighting and they are absolutely stunning. I don't have the full set of them yet, but scale 75 artist colors are absolutely wonderful paints, absolutely stunning. When you use them on a wet palette, they've got the range of being a really thick, dense paint, but when you water them down, they will give you some absolutely stunning uh, glazes and washes. So what I'm doing here, I picked four colors. I picked my two flesh shades, the very pale color, and then the very peachy one. And then I picked a magenta and a purple, mixing all of these colors together to try and find the right color. I wanted to keep the highlights on these wings very subtle because there's already a lot of visual information. There's already a lot of tones, highlights, and markings, and the texture on them is really good. So it was more picking the subtle colors that will just accentuate what is already there because your information is already there from your Xenophil highlights and your blending from uh, your oil colors. So you don't need to go for sort of the traditional way of edge highlighting you pick one very very bright tone and do all of the colors uh, do all of the edges that doesn't necessarily work too well when you've got a lot of tonal variation you want to be mixing different colors and picking where you want them so i would often pick one bit of the wing and then go through my bright tones go through my dark tones and just start picking out where i fall it just needed a little bit more definition, but it was very, very important to be mindful of the background color where you are adding those edge highlights. Because if it's in a darker area, you don't want your brightest color going there. You want a mid-tone, maybe one or two shades higher than the area that you're painting it in. So that way you keep all of that nice tonal uh, gradients between the lights and the shadows. Now I'm doing the same here with the bone colors. So I just picked a sort of generic brown and a nice ivory color, mixed them all together on the wet palette and I'm doing the exact same thing. So I'm not slavering on the brightest ivory color across all of the bone because that will just create, it just doesn't look right. It looks muddy and when you look at tones and shadows and highlights and lowlights, that's not how color reflects and it's not how light looks. So once again, you just need to be picking out what is a shade one or two above the area that you're highlighting. Sometimes you can go in with a neutral color and do sort of um, a lot of areas at once, but I'd recommend just taking it slowly, trying to pick out what is the right tone for the right area. And it's one of those sort of techniques that when you practice it, especially with a wet palette, it looks so, so much better than just slavering one like pastel bright highlight color over the whole thing. And this is what I'm talking about before with these colors. So I've really watered down that magenta color in order to do all of the you know guts and internal bits of this poor poor ultramarine who has been essentially been mullered by david cronenberg's batman wet dream which is i think an apt way to describe this model because it's very very batman-y but it's also got that body horror element that a lot of david cronenberg stuff has 
it's a fantastic, really, really beautiful model. But my only issue I had with it, and this is an issue I have with a lot of Forge World stuff these days, is that you can see the print lines from where they're 3D printed as a master and then um, put in a mold. You can really see a lot of the print lines with this and it's not something that I'm that comfortable with fixing yet because I'm not that experienced with uh, 3D printed models. So at this stage with the black, I really kind of messed myself up here because I didn't block out a lot of the colors that I should have done before I went to the acrylic stage of highlighting. So what I'm doing here is, and it didn't come out that bad actually, it looked quite nice as a finished project, but in hindsight, I would do this a very, very different way where I would do the black and I would blend with greys with oils first. What I'm doing here is that I've taken that very, very neutral pastel blue gray, I've watered it down as a glaze and because these paints have so much pigment in them, they are absolutely gorgeous, that they will just glaze on really nicely and give you a gorgeous, gorgeous effect. So it came out a lot better than I was expecting, but because these are a very, very high pigmented paint, I then had to go back in. I watered down a very, very dark blue color. I'd actually watered it down a lot more than the initial glaze in order to bring it back down again because I didn't want it to be too pastel blue to start off with. But this actually worked pretty well. It wasn't ideal in hindsight, I'd block this color out again and probably do it with oils because it just saves you a lot of time. But if you do want to use the Scale 75 artist colors in this way, they will do the job and they will do the job well. They are a really good set of paints and I would really recommend um, picking some up. I don't have the complete set yet, but that's one thing I'm definitely gonna be investing in in the future. Yeah, so I'm just tidying things up now with my edge highlighting. With these colors and a wet palette, edge highlighting it just becomes an absolute dream. I think with an organic model like this, it's so much easier and it's so much nicer to do. Now, what I was talking about again, the exact same problem that I had where, I, where my workflow with this model was nowhere near as well thought out as I should have been. I was in an absolute rush with this model. I kind of picked the base colors on a whim uh, and it totally bit me in the ass because the color theory around this model, it's just not as coherent as I would have liked it to have been. But all, all, all in all, it kind of came out decent. Not brilliant, decent. So I'm just going in and I'm now taking that same pastel blue color, a little bit watered down, but because we've added that deep blue glaze, this will now work as a really nice highlight color. And without much fuss, it's a really good technique to do, especially with these, these paints. If you've watered them down, do it as a glaze, bring it back down with a nice dark color and you'll end up with a really smooth progression that looks really quite nice. Some of the trouble that I did have with sort of like the claws and the more sort of bony elements that I wanted to keep black, I really should have used oils because the flow around them, they just wasn't as clean or as nice as I would have liked. But I was just in a bit of a rush with the, this model, I wanted to get, get it done because I've got so, so many other products that are just sort of glaring at me. I still have my Wolf Spear kill team that is dying to be painted. But you can still get some pretty nice results with using the Scale 75 paints in this way. They work very well and they're a gorgeous set of paints. And I think the results from the model kind of speak for themselves. It's rushed, it doesn't look as good as it should, definitely. It was a bit of a cluster from start to finish, but I'm fairly happy with the results. I think the wings and the, the veins and those textures look absolutely lovely. It's just a shame about the rest of the model because it kind of lets it down. If everything was as good as the wings, I'd be so happy with this model, it would be 
on my display case probably forever uh, but in its current form I'm kind of still not overly happy with it uh, and it's something that I'm gonna have to probably correct in future right guys so this model from bean to cup was a bit of a up but I hope there's enough interesting techniques in there that make you guys want to try out oil painting yourself on your models because it's not something that you should be afraid of trying it is one of those techniques that has absolutely reinvigorated my love for miniature painting it's absolutely taking my painting to a completely different level to something that I never thought I'd really be able to achieve and do you can create some wonderful effects with it and please just just try it because you can have so so much fun with it you can pick up that Winsor and Newton set of like 20 different colors for about 30 pounds and those will probably see you through uh, if you want to experiment with oil painting um, Abtalung 205 are a fantastic set of paints as well but most of them tend to be quite desaturated because they're more geared to like second world war style of painting but absolutely worth having a look at those colors as well because they are really really nice and you can get some lovely effects with them don't forget to uh, like comment and subscribe if you have any questions about uh, the colors and the techniques that i'm using i'm more than happy to answer any questions if you want to support the channel because i really want this channel to grow and evolve and be something quite special please consider supporting us on patreon the link will be in the description thank you very much guys and next time i will actually be painting that wolf spare kill team that i have been promising for so long cheers guys bye bye